When I first started out, I used to do my coding interviews in Java. Later, I moved to Python. And now, I make sure to use React in every interview that I take. Many of you might be thinking how a front-end library like React can be used in coding interviews. And you would be right. The React that I am talking about is different. React is a systematic approach that gives you five steps that you must follow in any coding interview. Every letter in the word React stands for one step. If you follow all the steps in the framework, it will take your interviewing game to the next level. Let me show you how. Imagine that you are in an interview and the interviewer asks you the following problem. You are given a string of brackets and you need to return whether the string is valid or not. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, hold that thought. You see, I have learned the hard way that jumping straight into coding is a recipe for disaster. That's why we need React. Let's break it down starting with R which stands for repeat. Always and I mean always repeat the question back to the interviewer. Because here's the thing, you might think that you have got it all figured out. But trust me, your brain can play tricks on you. I learned this lesson the hard way in an interview that I did a long time back. The interviewer gave me what I thought was the classic two sum problem. You know, find two numbers in an array that add up to a target sum. I had seen it before so I jumped right in implementing a solution using hash map. Big mistake. Turns out, the interviewer had tricked me. The input array was already sorted, which completely changes the optimal approach. If I had just taken a moment and repeated the problem back to the interviewer, I might have caught that crucial detail. Instead, I ended up with a solution that used extra space because I did not take advantage of the sorted array. Needless to say, I did not get that job. But here's the thing. Don't just repeat the problem the same way the interviewer presented it to you. Repeat it in the form of questions. Let me show you by using our valid brackets problem. I would say something like this. Okay, so if I understand it correctly, you want me to write a function that determines if a string of brackets is valid. Can I ask some questions to make sure that I am on the right track? First, when you say valid, do you mean that each opening bracket must have a closing bracket in the correct order? Also, are we dealing with only the regular round brackets? Or should I account for square and curly brackets as well? And just to clarify, an empty string would be considered valid, right? Did you see what I did there? I did not just repeat the problem. I demonstrated that I was actively thinking about it and considering different scenarios. This approach not only ensures that you understand the problem, but also shows the interviewer that you are thorough and do not make any assumptions. These qualities are needed in real-world software development and many interviewers are looking for them. Next step is E for examples. This step is very important but many candidates skip it because they are used to platforms like LeetCode where examples are already provided. In a real-world interview, you might need to ask for specific input and output examples. This not only helps you understand the problem better, it also uncovers those hidden requirements that some interviewers love to sneak in. For our valid brackets problem, I would ask something like this. Could you provide me some examples of valid and invalid strings? It would really help me understand the expected behavior. Many people try to come up with examples themselves, but I do not recommend it. That's because we do not want to miss a chance to get a sneak peek into the interviewer's mind. The interviewer might respond with some examples like this. These examples confirm that we are dealing with different type of brackets, not just the regular ones. They also show that a single closing bracket without a matching opening bracket is invalid and the brackets must close in the correct order. Next step is A. Before we can talk about that, I want to warn you that this step might not work if you have not practiced enough coding problems. More than 100,000 people have already solved Interview Master 100, which is my list of top 100 interview problems. Do check it out and make sure you can solve all of them before you start applying React framework in your interviews. I will leave a link in the description and the comments. Anyway, after covering the examples, now we are at A for approach. This is where you explain your solution strategy without writing any code. It's your chance to show your problem solving skills and get some valuable feedback. For our valid brackets problem, I would say something like this. I'm thinking of using a stack based approach. We would iterate through the string and for each opening bracket, we will push its corresponding closing bracket on the stack. When we encounter a closing bracket, we will check if it matches the top of our stack and pop the stack. If it doesn't match or the stack is empty, we know that the string is invalid at the end. If the stack is empty, we know that all our brackets were closed properly. Does this approach sound reasonable to you? This explanation shows that I understand the problem and I have a solid strategy. If the interviewer has any concerns or suggestions, 
they can guide me before i start coding speaking of coding that's what c stands for only now after all this preparation do we actually start coding by this point you should have a clear idea of what you are doing making the implementation much smoother here is how i might code the solution as i am coding i need to explain my thought process i might say something like this i'm using a dictionary to map closing brackets to their corresponding opening brackets this makes our code more flexible if we ever need to add more types of brackets we can simply update this dictionary the core logic is in the for loop if we encounter an opening bracket we use the dictionary to find the corresponding closing bracket and push it onto the stack if we encounter a closing bracket we check if the stack is empty empty stack would mean that we have a closing bracket without a matching opening bracket if the stack is not empty we check if the last opening bracket doesn't match our current closing bracket in both these cases we return false finally we return true if our stack is empty which means that all the opening brackets are closed properly let's move on to the last step which is t for testing always test your code against the examples that you discussed earlier this step is important for many reasons first it shows the attention to detail which the interviewers love second it can catch errors that you might have missed and third it gives you a clear idea of how well you did in the interview this is how you might test your code as i run through these tests i will explain what each test case is checking i would say something like this the first three cases check valid strings with different combinations of brackets the fourth and the fifth case check invalid strings where the brackets don't close in the correct order the sixth case checks for an extra closing bracket which should be invalid the seventh case checks for an extra opening bracket which should be invalid and the last case checks an empty string which should be valid by walking through these test cases you are showing that your solution works as expected if there are any edge cases or additional scenarios that the interviewer wants you to test you are now in a great position to handle them the next time you are in a coding interview remember to use the react framework but before you go for your next interview prepare yourself by solving top 100 interview problems using interview master 100 the link is in the comments my name is sahil and i'll see you in the next one